I know about chillers. Makes cold water. This is an air-cooled model, so it rejects, takes the heat out of the water, makes mm -hmm. it colder, rejects the heat to the atmosphere. This could also be reversed and be a heat pump, kind of like your home heat pump where it cools the outdoor air and it heats the water. That's right. Explain to me how the heat pump aspect of this comes into play. Let's say I'm in the south and I've got a two-pipe system. Yeah, yeah. How do, how do I go into heating mode? When do I know to go into heating mode? So a lot of times you're gonna see in a two-pipe chiller setup, they're also gonna have a boiler of some type, right? For that, okay. for heating, for that uh, building. So the way that we can utilize this is it can be a standalone heating system, right? And it can replace, due to electrification, any type of gas heating that you may have. Also, it is possible to run this as a four-pipe system. So if you have multiple modules, it will require multiple modules, sure. but you can have it valved off the flanges, yep. have four pipes there so that you can run some of those modules in cooling while simultaneously running some of those in gotcha. heating to gotcha. meet a heating demand if needed. So you can or, do a to full four, four pipe system without a boiler if it's designed right properly. You, you absolutely could, okay. that is correct. Do that, yep. Is that common up north when you're getting 20 below zero or do they typically have a boiler supplementing that or how does that typically? Yeah, work? that's still gonna be a situation when you get to those low ambience where you're still gonna need some type of boiler sure. set up to help extreme with that. low ambience, um, yeah. You know, in, in very extreme conditions. This, not to say that you can't climates, provide the heat. Moderate heating. climates like the Carolinas, Georgia. You got it through Tennessee, Virginia. Tennessee, Virginia. DC, absolutely. This is a gotcha. great option for that. And you know, electrification's coming on strong, so this is, one of the best opportunities we have to, you know, be a part of that movement. Mm -hmm. So this is a 20 ton module that we see here. We actually go up to 60 ton individual it's modules. So, I love how it's so thin and tall. It's like you can put it in a lot of different places you can't put, because normally, if your people are watching this, they don't know, normally it's a square. It's a box, right? It is, yeah. And so it is a little bit more of a slender design, and I'll yeah. get into why that is in a minute. Okay. But when we get up to a 60 ton module, for example, we've essentially taken uh, three of these 20 ton banks and paired them together into one box for one chassis. But it ships chassis. as one piece. It ships as one okay, piece, so gotcha. that's that one solid piece. So you have this basic module. framework, they're all multiples of the, the 20 you got ton? It. Okay. You got it, gotcha. so after a 60 ton module, if we needed more capacity than that, you would just mm -hmm. simply pair together multiple 60 ton modules. So if you needed 600 tons of capacity, you'd have 10 60 ton modules together. Now, all of those can be paired together and controlled with uh, a edge tank controller, which also allows back net compatibility for the chillers. Right. Or you can have these chillers be standalone. They have an onboard controller that allows them to be operated independently or up to five modules paired together through one main onboard controller. Got it. So yep. it's looking at the leaving water temperature, controlling everything to meet that leaving water temperature. That's right. Someone's got it on a time of day schedule. Start at 7 a.m., start making 44 degree water, stop at whatever. You got it. And all of these modules when paired together can ramp up and down together. Now, okay. it is possible, and this is for unique applications, to have them independently operate, still as a chiller system, but one ramps up before the other. The other may only come on when the capacity is required. Right, so it can right. be very flexible. So a couple other talking points on the chiller that make it unique to other people is that we actually have independent refrigerant circuits for every 10 tons. Okay. So this being a 20 ton module means that we're gonna two have- Two independent circuits. Two 10 ton circuits, that's gotcha. right. So. If you go up to a 60 ton module, same thing. We're gonna have six independent refrigerant circuits with six compressors. So if you have a compressor go down, you're still gonna have five that are gonna to continue to operate. Very so nice. we're gonna get some really nice redundancy built into each and every one of these modules. Now is there a benefit to having three of these versus one 60 ton package? There can be, and, and really that's only in one way, and that's electrical. So okay, if gotcha. we're gonna have three of these versus one 60 ton, and we want to run three independent right, uh, electrical right. circuits, then now you've eliminated the case of what happens if I lose power on this circuit to that one 60 ton module. Now if you lose power on one circuit, you still have two other circuits that are gonna operate. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Sure. And maybe standby generation. Standby generator would be nice if you just wanted one of the modules to run. Or a battery as LG has in the truck here. Oh yes. my gosh, okay, we'll get to that <laughs> next. I wanna know about that. But so inverter scroll, it means it has a VFD compressor. So it has an inverter board. Uh, it's a true inverter scroll compressor similar to our multi-V5 condensing units. Gotcha. Actually, it's exactly the same. So it's not a same. VFD, it's an inverter board. You got it, that's okay. right, yeah. Gotcha. And as a matter of fact, a lot of the parts that we use in this, if not all the parts for the most part, are the same that we use in our multi-V5 mm -hmm. condensing unit. So we keep parts here in stock in the US. Yeah. Gotcha. So a few talking points on the air cold chiller that kind of helps separate it from others is that we have, by default, a 10,000 hour corrosion resistance on the coil. 
So most people, you would pay to have that coded. It would be a premium cost. That's sure. going to be us no matter what. And that's so, not coded. That is embedded into the fins. We call it black okay. fin too. So that's Got what helps it. us achieve the 10,000 hour corrosion. That's on resistance. all chiller. Is that on all air cooled products in general? It, it is. So okay. on our condensing unit, Multi V5 VRF condensing unit, same thing. Okay. This chiller, all of our modular sizes, same thing. Also, a talking point is that we do keep the chillers in stock here in the US. If oh, it's a okay. stock chiller, one that we have in stock currently, we're running about a two week lead time on getting wow. it out. Now, if we do run out of stock, which is possible, of course, then we could be anywhere from 12 to 14 or 15 weeks, which is still a fraction of the lead time of everyone else in the market. Gotcha. Excellent. Yep. Great. Thank you, Kevin. Awesome. Appreciate your time. Thank Appreciate you. you. Appreciate it.